than years ago, there were people living here, and then suddenly, they were not. We're doing this? We're doing it. Going after Atlantis? One of the peak civilizations of its day. A city that disappeared overnight. They want to hear that there is evidence. It's part of some kind of civilization. This is Atlantean architecture. Do you see what I see? Atlantis Rising premieres Sunday at 9 on National Geographic. Author Giorgios Diaz Montexano has been researching this area for years, and he's convinced that some Atlantean refugees fled inland and built shrines to memorialize their lost city. Deciphering the shrines would help Giorgios prove his theory. No se ve realmente la gente, pero sí se ven como tres barcos y como de ocho remo o doce remos cada uno. According to Giorgios, the epic of Atlantis is recorded in a series of Stone Age petroglyphs, images inscribed in stone, telling the story of a drowned city, a legendary port, and ships that once sailed the Atlantic. I think that we shoot here. But see, that's going to mean the camera is going to be... be up there. To test his theory, Georgios enlists the help of engineer Ken Boydston and professor Gregory Hayworth, experts in forensic photography and spectral imaging, bringing lost images back to life. Yo pienso que la gente que opina que esto no es serio es simplemente porque no se lo han tomado en serio. Yo creo en la búsqueda honesta de la verdad, esté donde esté, sea cual sea y caiga quien caiga. Ready? Shoot. Shooting. I'm using the strobe as a raking light, which will bring out the shadows and the depth of the uh, incisions in the rock. Oh, yeah, this is a horse with a long flowing mane. Yeah. Shoot. Shooting. I'm looking closely at the screen, and I like what I'm seeing. I can see the hoof much more clearly. I'm looking for signs of a horseshoe which has a lip at the end and I see no signs of a horseshoe at all, which means it's pre-Roman. That would be pre-Roman. Oh, oh, here we go. Okay, yeah, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff here. The investigators see wide, moat-like circles that surround the entire scene. I see a bunch of concentric circles, and in the middle of this, there's some roughly parallel straight lines. Concentric, moat-like circles are exactly what Plato reports when describing Atlantis. What's that line right above the horse? Well, that's a long, wavy line. And actually, there's a couple of them. There's one there and one a further one up. Could they be mountains? Could they be waves? It could be water. Horse could be underwater. Could be. Could be. The horse is tilted downwards. If it's underwater, that could mean it's drowning. And it seems Shoot. that it's not the only figure beneath the apparent line of water. That you looks like a boat. That line. looks like a boat uh, up in the right-hand corner. Zoom in a up bit, here. Ken. This one here looks like that's maybe what I was the talking hull. About. That's that the could hull be the boat. hull of a boat. Yeah, yeah. And the if that's the hull of a boat, that boat's underwater. Captain Jose Maria positions the ship. Tensions run high. Good to go. What do we look for? Ships? Wood rots over thousands of years, but breakwaters, jetties, and stone anchors don't. Are these docks? Maybe they're breakwaters. Then, finally, a huge ancient stone anchor. 
Even Ralph, the ever skeptical marine archaeologist, is excited. It's about this big, it's uh, 83 centimeters across, and it's uh, about this thick. It's smooth on both sides, got a nice hole in it, and uh, yeah, we were quite, quite surprised to see that. After weeks of fruitless searching, everyone's excited when Ralph determines that the anchor could date to the Bronze Age. It fits the Atlantis timeline. These are stills, these are stills, yeah. It's really an amazing find. I mean, a lot of people will get excited about anchors, but this anchor, you should get very excited about. This is a 3,000, 4,000 year old anchor that is massive for a very, very large boat that shows us that ancient large boats were sailing into this area 4,000 years ago. It's widely believed that mankind did not sail into the Atlantic Ocean before the 8th century BC. According to this idea, all fishing and trading routes in this area were confined to the Mediterranean Sea. This anchor tells a different story. Our team has found more Bronze Age anchors on the Atlantic side of Spain than anyone before. If we found six in a few dives, there must be thousands out there, confirming Plato's report of a port just past the Pillars of Hercules. Plato also states that the ships of Atlantis sailed across the Atlantic, stopping at isolated islands en route. To test this claim, we once again go west, all the way to the Azores, Portuguese islands located in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. There's three rules to archaeology. Location, location, location. If you're looking for a place that has specific coordinates, either in literature or in inscriptions, you go to that place. After years of research, he believes that the search for Atlantis begins beneath these waters. Find the lost city is gathered some of the best divers and marine archaeologists in the world. I have no doubt that there are vast areas that were once inhabited by people that are now hundreds of feet underwater. The evidence is really what people want to hear about. They don't want to hear about the theories, they don't want to hear about just geophysics. They want to hear that there is evidence and they want to know what that evidence is. Plato is writing in a very specific time period. So when he says that Atlantis was located at the Strait of Gibraltar, he called them the Pillars of Hercules in his time, every single mariner, every single Greek reader, every single person knew exactly where he was talking about. We're right in front of the Strait of Gibraltar, the Pillars of Hercules. You have to look right here. 